here. Uh, can you hear me fine? I never used microphone before, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Um, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to just thank uh, for the possibility and the opportunity uh, to speak here about something I'm quite um, passionate about, uh, which is maps. Uh, I am um, I'm a UI product designer, uh, originally from Prague, uh, and studied uh, design in Copenhagen, and moved to London around two years ago, um, uh, where I started, started to work at a fintech company in the city. Uh, now, when you know me a little bit, uh, I have a confession to make. I am a map geek. <laughs> and it seems like I'm not the only one. Um, there's something magical about maps and their design, um, combining science, aesthetics, and technique. Uh, humanity has had a long and obsessive relationship with maps. Um, our love uh, affair with maps is not new. There's probably re room here to think about how um, maps and their design is a metaphor for humanity's quest and the journey of trying to understand um, and make sense of our surroundings and the world we are living in. Um, um, they have the power to trans uh, transport you to the place you've never been and the wide places you've never seen from ocean depths to another planet, um, or a world that exists only in the imagination of a novelist. Maps are time machines too. They can take you into the past to see how the world looked like centuries ago and how the people saw it. Uh, or they can show you how a place that you know as well as the um, back of your hand uh, as it looked before you even came along uh, or as it might in the future. Always, they, they reveal something about the mind of a map maker. Every map has a story to tell, and through history, we've used maps as a work of art, scientific models of the world, and visual metaphors. It feels like yesterday, when uh, the first thing when I was planning my um, vacation abroad would be to buy a paper map. Now, um, even with, the, uh, with Google Maps, and constant internet connection, I still feel the excitement of just getting uh, a new map, even if it's just online, and just browsing through the new, um, new locations and just looking forward to the experience. I remember get, uh, getting lost in my parents' old Atlas of the World as a kid, and I loved nothing else uh, than to get, uh, get a book that has the fictional world inside of them as a map and be able to imagine it with, as I was reading it. Because of my small obsession, uh, I've managed to come across a few interesting facts about maps and designs, and I would like to share them with you. So to start from uh, the beginning, uh, in 16th century, uh, the rulers would often display maps uh, in their palaces as, um, uh, to show their power and might. Um, early maps were usually uh, just a way to show off uh, how great cities and empires the rulers have. Um, this medieval map is uh, from the uh, 13th century and is as the people knew the world at that time. Um, it, um, it has the Jerusalem uh, in the center of the map um, east is on top of the map, apparently, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, Great Britain should be somewhere in the bottom left corner. Um, somewhere in that area, uh, there's a Great Britain. Um, and there's also somewhere hidden a mythical island of St. Brennan that uh, originated in, on, on this map, but was carried to uh, many other maps after that as well, uh, which people call the Phantom Island. Uh, one of my favorite discoveries 
um, is the first known globe that was set very recently. Um, well, I say uh, fairly re recently, but it was 2012 actually, uh, found at the London Map Fair. Um, it is this uh, engraved oyst uh, um, ostrich egg. Uh, so there was a new world engraved on this ostrich egg uh, from two eggs, the bottom parts of it just stick to, to, to together to create this uh, round um, shape. Um, many, many explorers at that time were coming back from their journeys uh, exploring the world. And uh, the world as we knew it at that time was changing quite a bit. Uh, we don't know who's, who's created this globe, um, but whoever it was, he had to have a lot of inside knowledge about these explorers and their, their latest information uh, and what they brought from their overseas journey. Um, there is an apparent influence from uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, just with the details and the drawings um, and just the creativity of it. Uh, so that's why many people assume that he might be the creator and that's why we call it the da Vinci globe. Uh, but, uh, we still actually don't know who, who, who was the designer of this. Um, probably one of my favorite things um, is the Latin phrase, hit soon dragons, uh, which, is, uh, which means here be dragons. Uh, and uh, people, would used to, uh, people used to engrave it uh, in the unexplored areas of the map uh, to show um, how dangerous that part might be, um, together with some drawings of sea monsters and mythical creatures, um, just so people don't go there. Uh, so from uh, Asian maps to portable maps, uh, have you ever wondered where the map, board map came from? Uh, well, I did, I did some research about it and um, it's from the Latin phrase mapa mundi, which mapa means napkin or cloth, and mundi obviously means world. Uh, so all together, it literally means napkin world, which is probably uh, came from our first uh, encounters with the maps as uh, just hand-drawn scribbles on a piece of cloth or paper uh, of the specific location that we were looking at. As map became cheaper and more accessible to everyone, uh, more and more people could make sense of the world and navigate in it much easier. People started using folding maps and road atlases to get around. Um, in 1930s, um, Otto Lindbergh and his assistant uh, were in charge of creating New York's uh, state map. In an attempt to protect their copyright and the material they were working with, and to catch anyone who could potentially uh, try to copy their map. Uh, they've created a fake town. They've created something that's called a paper town and maybe someone who knows um, or is familiar with a book from, uh, by John Green, uh, Paper Towns, that's what he is talking about. Uh, so they created this fake town a uh, paper town called, uh, called Aglo, which was um, uh, the, the anagram of their initials, and they would place it on the crossroad uh, close to Rockland. Uh, Aglo, Aglo's story was perhaps one of the strangest uh, in the history of like, map making and copyrights. Um, usually, um, map makers wouldn't create entire towns and cities out of paper and ink. Um, they would usually go for something much subtle, such as um, street dead ends that don't exist, or um, fake rivers. Um, and if a competitor happens to have the same place on their map, you've pretty much caught them red-handed, and you know they, they stole or copied uh, your map. Um, what the creators of Aglo, uh, the paper town, didn't expect was for the town to become a reality. Um, so what happened there was that people would 
uh, they would put this town on their maps, people were using it, people would keep trying to find it, would be looking for it or just expect to drive past by it uh, until someone actually created a gas station on that crossroad called Aglo. Uh, and that's how basically the city came to life and then people started to visit that place and it, it, it uh, became a town on its own. Um, Google Maps apparently um, had uh, some of their pepper towns as well, but um, as far as I know, they would usually delete it very quickly, so I don't know if that's, that's a mistake or they do it intentionally. Um, so um, moving to modern maps uh, and data, everyone used Google Maps at least once in their life. Um, it's the GPS of choice for millennials. Uh, it's the finder of public toilets and ATMs. Uh, the easy access, uh, the travel guide tucked into your pocket. So long as you have the internet connection, you can pretty much find anything anywhere uh, just with the top of your uh, index finger. Um, Google Maps is a portable travel diary. Until recently, maps were static and printed, which limited the potential use. But with the technology and advancement uh, content of the maps, and the maps themselves uh, became digital, interactive, and more appealing. Um, during some of my research about the maps, I came across uh, a few interesting interactive maps that uh, I would like to show you. Um, so this is one of them. This is a um, US electricity resources map. Um, so when you're turning the light on, you don't necessarily think about the resource and uh, the source behind it. Uh, this interactive map will show you exact um, amount of electricity and where is it generated from and how much you're using it. Uh, each of that dot or column means different information. Uh, and I think that's, that's pretty awesome. You can just uh, you know, interact with it and, and see uh, the details you're looking for. Uh, another example is uh, this uh, World Atlas of Languages. Um, so did you know that there is um, 2,678 living languages in the world? Um, I not sure at it. Um, so this, this interactive map shows you, if you, if you click through it, um, it shows you how many languages we have, uh, where is it spoken, and how many people in the world spoke that language, uh, which is pretty amazing. What, but what, probably one of my favorites, or the most fascinating one for me at least, is this one. So this is country to country net migration. Um, used in interactive map, uh, which kind of shows you the estimate of people traveling, moving outside, and coming back to, to countries from around 2010 to 2015. So the blue circles indicate uh, people um, coming to country, and the red circles indicate people leaving the country. Um, it has, yeah, if, if you play with it, it, it there is a lot of different information uh, that you can find. Last example of these interactive maps is this graffiti around the world map um, using Banksy's um, artwork as an example. Uh, I think me as a, as a graffiti fan or his fan of his art um, I think this is pretty awesome, so people can browse through the, this website and see the story behind every single of his art, uh, where it is, how you can find it, and what's the story behind it, which I think is it's very nice. Um, okay, so Google Maps and uh, the future of the maps, what's next? Um, so. Google Maps recently released a big deal, Argumented Reality. Uh, 
in a nutshell, you can, uh, you can have this live view display that shows you virtual signs in the real world. Uh, so you can hold your phone in front of your face uh, and Google Maps will directly tell you which way to go uh, by just signs hanging in the air um, and you can, you can get to your destination uh, the entire way just holding your phone in front of your face, basically. Uh, our phones know where we are at all times. Uh, there's just no hiding from that blue dot uh, in Google Maps. Well, except the times when it doesn't work and uh, the blue dot shows you that you are standing across the street where you actually are or that you are in the restaurant next door. Uh, more than once, Google Maps uh, made my journey actually much more difficult than it would be without it just by showing me the wrong direction on, or uh, you know, showing me the, the wrong way how to get to places. So, Technology is great until you know, it doesn't work and that it messes up everything else. Um, thanks to the tall buildings, uh, it can be quite difficult to find the GPS signal, which means the blue dot can jump place to place, as I'm sure everyone has experienced before. Um, one maybe unexpected side of this navigating this way is that using camera to navigate through the city will make your uh, location much more accurate uh, just because y you basically see what you're, what you're looking at and what's right in front of you. Uh, it's pretty obvious that this feature doesn't stop with smartphones. Uh, the tech that makes this work is similar to what makes self-driving cars work and you might be looking at um, looking for a restaurant uh, on your AR windshield pretty soon. And whenever we start wearing uh, AR glasses, for example, things like this will just make sense to have right in front of our face. Um, the most of the big technology advancements, even future AR usage in maps and other places uh, has its pros and cons always, and we should be aware of that uh, while using it, such as privacy issues or danger of uh, reality modification. Um, but I sincerely hope that we can take it to a good place and just acknowledging these, um, these issues uh, while using it will, will just help us all um, to use it for, for um, you know, a good things. <laughs> um, this is all from me. Thank you very much. Um.